Hello there, my name is Sixo, but more on that later as now it's time for a brand new unboxing video. And let me just start by saying that there's no way I'm going to be reviewing the DX9 Star- Oh, I did that one already, eh? I mean, look, I'm committed now because just the other day this massive thing turned up on my doorstep. Seriously, look at the size of this box. This is DX9 D14 Capone, and it really does look like an offer I can't refuse. D14 Capone is the second figure in DX9's Stunticon lineup, and as the largest member of the crew, he represents team leader Motormaster. Of course, there have been a few attempts at this character in Masterpiece style already, but I'm really intrigued by DX9's offering as it seems to offer a unique take on the transformation to vehicle mode. This release is also packing a big secret, in that a large portion of the trailer converts directly into the bulk of the combined Menosaur form, nicknamed by DX9 as Attila. Can't wait to see it today then! It'll also be interesting to see how Capone himself shapes up against the Motormaster animation model, as from pictures it looks like DX9 have done quite a good job at bringing it to life. And of course we're going to be doing loads of comparisons with other toys, including with the two previous Motormaster offerings from Fans Toys and X-Transbots, just to see which one is king of the road. Last thing before we begin, this review comes courtesy of TF Source, so you'll find a link to their listing in the video description. I'll be aiming to get a full gallery and review up on their blog ASAP after giving you my first impressions today. Well, here's Capone in his box, and my word, it is enormous. Absolutely enormous. I'm, I, I'm stunned. Honestly, I'm absolutely stunned by the size of this thing. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, when it first arrived, and I, um, I, I thought the shipping box was large, but, uh, you know, getting it out, I was like completely blown away by it. Uh, it's not even that it's that tall. I mean, it, it is tall. But it's just the absolute length of this thing, and, and clearly it's to take account of the uh, it's a very long trailer on this toy in vehicle mode, and then that you know becomes the combined mode as well as we'll see. But um, yeah, it's huge. I think the best thing I can do for you is uh, if I throw in a, a something like Masterpiece Wheeljack in there just to show you. I mean, he's just dwarfed by this thing. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So yeah, I don't know. If you are someone that keeps your boxes, I don't know where you're going to put this one, I have to say. But uh, you know what? It, it looks nice to um, uh, nice artwork of the of the toy on the front here. And they're really swinging into the theme here, aren't they, with the uh, with the old quote on the front. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like it. It looks really cool. Um, it's good packaging. It's just um, big. Uh, here's the back of the box. And in case I forget to mention it, it's not just big. It's heavy too. <laughs> very, very, very heavy. Uh, just picking this thing up is, uh, well, I don't need to go th to the gym for a while, <laughs> let's just say that. Uh, but yeah, on the back here you've got this kind of computerized look at the toy. Uh, it looks cool, but, uh, but hey, I can't wait to get it open. Right, let's check out that content, shall we? Tape is cut, and box is open. Here we go. Here we go. Oh man. Still going. Still going. Still going. Whew. And there it is in the clamshell. And uh, well, first thing you'll notice is that actually there's no there's no extra space or anything like that. I might have thought for a box that size that there was a bit of padding or something going on. Uh, but no, that's the actual toy. It's just that big. I mean, that is... <laughs> It's just absolutely ridiculous. I'm genuinely speechless, and that does not happen often, I can assure you. Oh my word. Anyway, let's go ahead and get it out the box, shall we? Oh my god. Here we go. What is going on? Look at this thing. <laughs> Honestly, how big is it? I mean, I knew that the trailer was, was long, but look at it. So also included here is a, a little baggie with the uh, instructions and the character card just there uh, and this little extra piece which um, actually eludes me at the moment. I'm not quite sure what it's for but we'll, we'll check that out shortly. You've then got a very large purple blaster which looks really really cool. One smaller sword, presumably for the uh, Motormaster robot mode. 
and then a larger sword for the combined mode which uh i mean honestly i just i can hold it in my hand and it looks almost life size certainly if i gave this to my son then uh, gosh he'd go nuts with it well anyway here's everything that you get in the box so you've got the uh the toy itself which is i mean just gigantic uh you've got uh the the um larger sword smaller sword uh the gun uh, and then you've got the uh, the little baggy uh, with the instructions character card and that little extra piece. What is a little bit strange is that I was actually anticipating another uh, accessory as well, the, the lightning bug, which um, uh, I've seen a lot of pictures of it online, the kind of lightning bug accessory, which is a, a, a G1 cartoon reference, but also transforms into the, the larger gun for the combined mode. Uh, and that at present doesn't appear to be in the box <laughs> with mine. So I don't know if I'm missing it or if it's just kind of hidden somewhere inside the, the trailer which is possible, but I, I didn't think that was the case um, from what I'd seen. So uh, I guess we'll find out. Still haven't figured out what this little piece is for though. It's included in the baggie with the instructions and the character card, but it's not actually mentioned in the instructions themselves. So uh, I'm still a little bit clueless. I'm sure we'll figure it out as we go. Okay, well, I guess it's time to, uh, to get cracking with this vehicle mode, eh? And I mean, where do you begin? It's just so big. Right, well, uh, I guess the first place is uh, with these little smokestacks on the back here, which just slide up like so. And that completes the look for this, uh, well, frankly, ridiculous vehicle form. I mean, it's just so, so long. It's kind of outrageous. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to not look at it and giggle a little bit, to be fair. Uh, I mean, clearly what's happened here is that the, the bulk of the combined mode is all fit into this back section of the trailer. I, I do know already that it separates here, uh, or roughly here anyway, uh, for transformation. And then the front half, front half, front tiny little portion here is what becomes Motormaster himself. And then everything else is combined form. Uh, and like the bulk of the combined form anyway. So we'll see that in just a little bit. But um, a real trade-off because it's an interesting solution and, and I kind of like what they're going for in some ways, uh, you know, versus let's say fans toys where they have like a whole second trailer uh, or they will have a whole second trailer on the back of their Motormaster. So you have like the regular Motormaster and then a second trailer um, to, and that's what's going to make their combined mode. They've already confirmed. Uh, and that always seems like quite a weird, com you know, a weird solution to me to have two trailers. But um, the, the thing here is obviously they've tried to do just the one trailer for cohesiveness sake or, or whatever else. But the trade-off is just that it's so out of proportion. It's, it's just nuts. Uh, I mean, I've never seen a truck that large in my entire life. I don't think such a thing could even exist. Um, I think just for me, the fact that there's just the two sets of wheels is kind of the ultimate sign of how crazy this is because at least if there was like another little set of wheels here or something it, it might feasibly look like it could drive but um the the weight of it if it I don't know, it's just i mean yeah do, do you need me to say it i don't know it's just so crazy that said it it still does look quite nice i mean it's um it is ridiculous, but it does. Yeah, it, it's quite nicely finished, and it and it does look alright actually. Uh, I mean, particularly the cab section. We'll we'll look at that in a bit more detail in just a minute. Um, but even this back trailer section, you know, it is nicely done. I mean, it's the the design is crazy, but the actual finish to it and uh, and how it feels in hand is is you know very solid. Uh, it doesn't at all feel like it's going to come apart or anything like that. So, you know, props to them on that score, I guess. Uh, they've really kind of swung into this design, but uh, they've done it. They've done it well, you know, considering the, the design itself. So yeah, I mean, even just laying it on its side for a, for a kind of underneath view. I mean, it's it's pretty tidy, surprisingly so actually. Uh, I mean, you can see, you know, obviously various elements of the combined mode gumph uh, going on there, and you can just about get a view of his head if you look um, of Menasaur's head anyway, if you look close enough. Um, but yeah, even that's quite tidy. I mean, you know, from a rear view, again, it, it clears up quite well, actually. I, I still kind of can't get over it, but, uh, you know, from every angle, I mean, it doesn't... I was going to say it doesn't look bad, but, I mean, it's hard to know what to say, really. It's just kind of so bizarre. Um, but no, it, it is clean. I mean, it, all joking aside and kind of getting a grip on myself, but it is, it is a clean-looking trailer mode, uh, generally speaking. 
Uh, you know, the panel lines and things like that really aren't too bad. Um, I heard a couple of people mentioning about this broken stripe uh, on, on the side of the trailer there. That in itself is, is cartoon accurate. So, you know, like it or lump it, it kind of is what it is. If you're after cartoon accuracy, if that's your thing, uh, then, then that is, you know, that is it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, other than it being too long, it actually looks very good. So the trailer doors do actually open as well. They just kind of unpeg like that and, and fold open. Uh, there's no attempt at a real world interior or anything like that going on. Um, so, you know, that that is, <laughs> I mean, I don't think I expected it to be completely honest. There's no, even despite the size of it, there's probably no room for anything in there considering that it, it makes all the combined form. Uh, but to be fair, that is something that both the um, X Transbots and the Fans Toys versions of this character managed to incorporate. Certainly X Transbots more than any because you can actually fit some of their stunticons inside their upcoming trailer. Uh, whereas this, not so much, but uh, hey, at least, the, at least the doors are there, uh, even if not a ramp or something. So, but you know, it's something. Wheels on this trailer mode do look really nice uh, and they do roll, so that's good. Um, and in fact, the whole thing rolls quite well on a, on a flat surface. So, uh, and the, the tires are rubber too. Getting a, a little bit more into the detail of the trailer section, uh, I mean, this is the paint on that stripe on the side, and it's got a kind of nice sparkly, uh, sparkly quality to it, which is um, very perceptible uh, in hand, actually. It looks really nice. You know what, I will say as well, that I'm genuinely impressed with how solidly put together this thing is, because even being, you know, quite robust with it and, uh, and trying to pull it apart, it ain't gonna go. So um, yeah, it, it's all tabbed together very nicely, feels really solid and chunky, so, it's massive, but uh, but it feels well built. Okay, well let's talk about the kind of main bit on this uh, vehicle mode, which of course is the uh, the cab section, uh, just here, and uh, it, it looks really really good. I have to say, um, really really nice. It's a shame that it can't separate from the trailer in any way, because honestly, I feel like just this piece uh, by itself would be quite an attractive uh, thing to kind of you know roll around and and, and play with. Uh, really interesting to see how that section transforms as well, but we'll look at that in just a bit. But certainly just for vehicle mode, the detail on the cab is is looking good. I mean, actually, you know what? It looks good enough that uh, if I just crop the image like that uh, and you don't see how stupidly long the trailer is, I'd, I'd be hard pushed to say that that isn't quite possibly one of the best looking third party Motormasters I've seen. I mean, it looks fantastic uh, from that regard. Uh, really, 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 really strong visual look, and it definitely nails the character. Uh, it's just a shame then that when you when you kind of see you know the rest of the trailer and it keeps on going and going and going, that it um, is as long as it is. <laughs> My word. Okay, well it's also worth mentioning that the cab can actually turn at the trailer uh, section, so that's really really good. Uh, I wasn't sure if it would be able to from, from pictures and everything else, but yeah, it turns really really freely actually, so uh, whether he'd be able to go round corners realistically is another matter, but um, I'll leave that up to your imagination. Uh, also fair to say that the um, purple sections on here uh, look very, very nice in hand, really quite stunning uh, and catch the light beautifully. It might just be the angle of my lights, but um, actually these top sections, this sort of top window section is, is especially eye-catching, uh, just for the way it really kind of bounces the light around. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Really like the colour purple that they've chosen as well. There's a uh, painted uh, section on the sides of the doors and a little wing mirror as well, so that's nice. Attention to detail. Smokestacks look good too. They've got a kind of nice silver painted finish. That looks really, um, really, really lovely as do these purple cylinder sections on the side, which uh, have also got that kind of sparkly um, purple finish to it. They look great. In fact, I'm loving the attention to detail overall here. These little molded sections have uh, got a nice little bit of silver paint to them as well. Um, and just generally speaking, it, it does feel like, um, you know, bits like this that could have just been left black and left um, as just unpainted molded pieces. Uh, you know, the, 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 there's definitely a, a sort of good finish here, a good attention to detail, as I say. The headlights are just painted silver. Um, typically quite like to see some sort of translucent plastic there or something, but um, but still it looks fine. Some more little um, silver paint applications on top of the, the cab roof there, and um, these are actually really minute, so again, good attention to detail. Having a bit more difficulty getting the, um, the windows on the front of the cab to kind of really catch the light. They seem a lot darker, and I think it's just because of 
uh, whatever's going on behind them, uh, you know, which I'm sure we'll see during transformation. Um, but for that reason, they don't quite sort of catch the light as much as these windows on top. So it does look a little bit different, but uh, still not bad at all, and uh, the purple is nice. And to be fair, they've even painted stuff like the windscreen wipers, so uh, they've definitely gone to town on it. So, you know, overall, it's it's a decent show for the cab section. It looks it looks great, honestly. It really, really looks great. Um, and actually feels really good quality. I mean, if you've seen my DX9 Montana review by now, uh, which I, I published just a, a week or so ago, it um, I was so let down with the finish of that toy. It, you know, especially straight out of the box in vehicle mode, just covered in paint scratches, scuffs, you know, just the, the, the finish on it and the polish just really was not there. Uh, which I did say at the time I think is unusual for DX9 as they're normally, you know, a lot better than that. And um, lo and behold, this is kind of more what I was expecting. Um, the polish on this guy is, is really, really good. I feel like this is a little bit unfortunate. Just noticed how hollow the, the sort of um, bed of the back section of the cab is. Uh, and obviously, yeah, it doesn't detach. Uh, and maybe this is why, because uh, you can see straight through it. So at certain angles, that does look a little bit bizarre. The doors on the cab do open as well, actually, and um, very easy to do so because they're not even tabbed in or anything like that. So they literally just pop open. Uh, and there is a, I mean, there's not really an attempt at a real world interior in there, although there is a little space, actually, bizarrely, you can just about get part of your finger in there. Um, I mean, it might be big enough to fit some of the, the little masterpiece humans in there, like Spike or whatever else, but um, there's no seat or anything, that, you know, there's no uh, attempt at giving it any kind of detail in there. So, um, but still, it's cool that the doors can open. He's going in, he's going in, he's not going in. He's not going in. Perfection. What is also quite nifty on this vehicle mode is this, if you flip it over, this is the underneath of the, uh, the cab section just there, then you can actually um, uh, enact a bit of weapon storage and just go ahead and plug his sword, the smaller sword anyway, into the bottom of the cab mode. Um, and uh, that works pretty well. I mean, it obviously sticks out the back just here, but as you can't separate that out, it's not a major problem. Uh, you are going to see it slightly if you rotate the cab uh, too much, it's going to stick out of the side of the trailer, so that's a little bit questionable, or maybe that's a, a hidden battle feature, who knows, for unsuspecting vehicles uh, riding alongside them, I don't know. Weirdly though, there doesn't seem to be anywhere to feature the uh, the other weapons as storage, but um, I mean, maybe there is and I just haven't figured it out, because actually even the sword uh, bit was not actually mentioned in the instructions, it's only because they show you to take it out for transformation that uh, I suddenly went, aha! Uh -huh. Uh, clearly you can put the sword in there, um, but hey-ho. Uh, anyway, uh, first impressions of this truck mode overall are... I mean, look, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Absolutely ridiculous. I keep saying it, but far, far too long. Far, far too long. Uh, not at all something that could ever exist in reality, I don't suspect. Um, I mean, you know, I'm not an expert, but just... I mean, just look at it, for God's sake. But um, that said, the finish is really nice. So, you know what, if you are after a nice, nicely finished Motormaster vehicle, uh, you you could do worse, I guess. You could do worse. Uh, if you can get over the, the long proportions, or maybe you even like the long proportions, hey, how about that? Um, then then actually the, the finish is really spectacular. The cab section looks fantastic. Um, so yeah, it's not all bad. It's it's, it's just kind of just something you've got to get over with that, that long, long trailer. Right, well, we'll do some comparisons of the vehicle mode anyway, and uh, we are going to do some comparisons with the other uh, third-party Motormasters on the market, but we'll save that for the robot mode, as I think that's um, uh, where it's most interesting. Needless to say, uh, I mean, well, X-Transbots, their trailer isn't out yet, hopefully it's on the way soon, um, but both that and fans' toys uh, are going to be a lot shorter. Uh, anyway, what we uh, what is interesting is to see it versus uh, some of the Masterpiece car bots. Uh, and just squeezing him in, uh, I mean, right on the end there, is uh, Masterpiece Sideswipe, uh, looking very, very small by comparison. I mean, ridiculously small. Uh, we'll then bring in Masterpiece Trex. There he is, uh, just next to him. And Masterpiece Blue Streak. There we go. And let's bring in Fans Toys June Runner, who I just reviewed yesterday, actually. Um, there he is, uh, just popping him in uh, in the front there. 
And <laughs> I think what's really, really notable is that actually all four of these toys stacked, I mean, pretty much end to end. Uh, they're not not quite as long as uh, as Capone there. Not quite as long as Capone. All four of them. Uh, so there you go. Uh, I mean, June Runner here is not far off kind of car bot length. I think with I think yeah, four car bots. Four car bots is the length that you're looking at for this toy. So if you have four car bots in hand, then you can stack them end to end, and then that's how long this is going to be. Now let's take a look with uh, another recent review that we've done. This is Make Toys Endgame, their Dirge. Uh, and there you can see the size of him versus a... Well, this is a third party, but it's Masterpiece Seeker size, um, this, this mold. So if you do have one of the official MP11 Seekers, or MP3 even, uh, or indeed any of the Make Toys guys, that's the size of it. So you can see they're uh, just huge. Now we'll take a look versus another third-party Decepticon. This is KFC Ditka, uh, or at least the original test shot of it. Uh, I featured it in a few videos recently, because uh, somebody always asked me about it, about the colour of it or whatever. This was the original test shot with the lighter colour. Uh, and now you can see him versus Capone. Um, still looking rather massive. <laughs> and as one final comparison, and this one should really show off the size of this thing overall, here is Masterpiece Optimus Prime. Uh, now this is the MP10 version, uh, but of course MP44 is the same size. Uh, probably more people own MP10 to be fair, so maybe it's more useful. Uh, <laughs> and there you go, that just about shows you. I mean, yeah, the out of interest, the Fans Toys um, Motormaster is just a little bit longer than MP10, uh, so that gives you an idea. And I think, obviously we don't have it in hand yet, but from the pictures that I've seen, I believe anyway, that the XTB, the X-Transbots uh, version is, is roughly the same size uh, in terms of trailer length. So that really, for me, just encapsulates how crazy this is. Uh, I mean, it's it's about 40% longer, I would say, give or take. I'm not, and that's not an exact estimate by any means, but just, you know, eye to eye, it looks about that. So really, it, it depends how you feel about that. Do you know what I mean? If, if you like the lurk, or if indeed you can just get over the lurk, or maybe you don't even care about the vehicle mode that much, maybe you're just here for the combined mode, uh, you know, maybe it doesn't matter to you. Um, but uh, if, you, if you can get over it, then, you know, it's a nice looking vehicle mode, but maybe you think that just looks crazy. Uh, I, I think it looks a bit nuts. I've got to be honest, I think it looks a bit mad. Um, but I guess it is what it is. Right, well, we're going to take a look at um, transformation now anyway. And uh, as I've already alluded to, this vehicle mode actually splits into two with everything just here, this length, up, a, up to this seam here anyway, uh, becoming the motor master robot mode uh, and everything from this section back becoming the combined mode. So we'll do the combined mode a little bit later, uh, but for now we're going to take a look at the motor master transformation. So to do that we need to separate out the cab first of all. So first thing you do is just pull up these little tabs on top, then you pull down these sections, and then you should just be able to slide off uh, like so uh, the, uh, the front trailer section. I feel a bit <laughs> I feel a bit like a like a bloody magi magician doing that that trick with the with the the person when you saw them in half. Honestly, it's just ridiculous. So anyway, that's what's left of the uh, of the trailer. Uh, literally most of the toy uh, left behind to become the combined mode. So we'll look at that in just a little bit. And then this is the uh, the kind of front section that you're left with, which is. Uh, I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's so funny. It really makes me laugh that this is like the, just the front section of the trailer and it doesn't even disconnect from the cab. So there's no way of making it kind of plausible or anything like that. This is why <laughs> this thing's just so ridiculous. It's hilarious. Uh, this also really makes me laugh. Hey! Anyway, <laughs> enough joking aside. I'll, I'll get over it now. Uh, as I say, it's time for transformation. So let's take a look.
Okay, and that's transformation done. And uh, you know what, well, actually it was kind of fun. Uh, I quite enjoyed it. Uh, a couple of really uh, quite clever bits. Um, overall very, very fluid as well. Really, really smooth. Uh, absolutely nothing that should prove uh, any real sort of sense of challenge for you know people that are familiar with masterpiece uh, level transformations, so uh, no worries there. And uh, credit to DX9, is, um, I think that's actually one of the easier transformations that I've seen on, on any of their toys, actually. Uh, way more enjoyable than uh, Montana, I will say. So if you've watched my video on that and you saw that I had a, a couple of grumbles along the way, I thought this was much more fluid, um, to, to the point actually where it doesn't really feel like um, it was designed, you know, with the, by the same person or people. I don't know, it's, it's hard to put your finger on, but this is, um, maybe it's just the way it's built, but this is just much more fluid uh, in terms of how it converts. So uh, really, really interesting. I, I like some of the way that the, um, the the top half of the robot comes together, especially. I think that's really, really clever, uh, just especially because uh, it, it doesn't overcomplicate itself. I mean, uh, uh, no, one thing I have mentioned in a number of reviews over the years is this kind of over-engineered thing that happens sometimes with third-party toys, especially, uh, where they just seem to feel the need to put in a little bit of extra complication almost for the fun of it, I don't know. Uh, you know, where they just kind of feel like, uh, oh, let's just throw in some extra engineering there or whatever else. Whereas this actually is is quite simple. I don't know, it just doesn't doesn't pack in more than it needs to. It, it knows what it needs to do and it gets it done. Uh, similar story really with the, with the legs. Um, I mean, yeah, it uses some fake parts here as you'll have seen uh, during the transformation. I mean, realistically, there is no way that you can have a uh, realistic um, Motormaster without having fake parts. All of them have done it so far. DX9 uh, have done the same. Uh, Fans Toys, X Transbots, they've all done it. So, you know, you're always going to have fake parts on the feet. But to my mind, there's just no way that you can get toys like this looking as they're supposed to uh, versus the animation model or whatever your preference is and, and not have fake parts like that. So, certainly, Motormaster is one of the most interesting. And you know what? The robot mode cleans up quite nicely. I mean the overall look is very very clean. I mean there's a there's a few oddities needless to say which I'll go into in more detail in just a minute uh, but particularly the this sort of top half or from the knees upwards I should say uh, cleans up really nicely on this robot mode. I think it looks superb superb. Even looking at a back view it's surprising how little kibble there is on this guy actually. I have to say that um, I mean that backpack is is basically non-existent. Uh, and, and certainly it's the smallest backpack of any of the third-party Motor Masters we've had so far. Uh, I mean, in fairness to fans toys, they have to literally fit an entire trailer section on there because it's a, it's all in one, the whole trailer, everything. So that really is impressive, but still this is uh, cleaner with this solution. Uh, even X Transbots, which is just the cab section, is not as tidy as this one on the uh, on the reverse. But we'll do some comparisons in a, in a little bit. Um, so yeah, needless to say, it cleans up very, very nicely from the back, at least the top bit. <laughs> we'll talk about the legs in, uh, in just a minute. And the same is true on the front. I mean, uh, again, we'll come to those legs in just a second, uh, but certainly for the top half, I mean, it just, you know, really kind of nails the look of the character. I really like it. Uh, very, very clean. Nice colours too, like this grey. Uh, this chest section looks really cool. Uh, the head we'll look at in, in more detail just in, uh, in a second. Uh, but yeah, the overall look uh, on the top half is good. Really, really good. To their credit, more than I thought it was going to be actually, but better than I thought it was going to be anyway. Um, from pictures, all of that, I, I thought, you know, it looked okay, but uh, actually in hand, yeah, it does a good job. Really like these uh, translucent uh, plastic sections on the chest with a little bit of molded detail underneath. Uh, I mean, they're quite small, um, but they're, they're, they look great. I mean, they actually remind me a little bit of what um, Fans Toys have done on, on their copy. Looks good. Similarly, the molded detail on, on areas such as the abdomen and, and the chest in general just looks really, really cool. Uh, like it a lot, and uh, I think that it's a, a strong look. You can also kind of see the slightly um, uh, glittery plastic that they've used there as well. Uh, that looks top notch. 
Probably my only uh, grumble really with the top half of this robot is, uh, is these uh, sort of noticeable pins in the arms uh, which leave these little gaps, these four gaps just there. Uh, and it's not a, a, certainly not a deal breaker by any means, it just seems to be that they're quite noticeable, uh, these little gaps in the, in the forearms just there. However you look at him and however you uh, sort of seem to have him standing, I don't know, they just always catch my eye a little bit. But again, it's really a, a nitpick, not a grumble, a major grumble anyway at all. Face sculpt is okay? I don't know, it's it's passable, it's passable. It's um, probably my least favourite of the three Motormasters so far, probably. Uh, it's fine, I don't know, it kind of, with the purple and the expression, I think it's the expression, it really reminds me for some reason of Skeletor from the Masters of the Universe film. For some, I don't know why that is, but does anybody else get that vibe or is it just me? I mean, look, it, it's a fairly decent approximation of the character. It looks fine. Um, it's got a kind of nice sparkly quality to it. Uh, the eyes catch the light at the right angle. Uh, although, to be fair, I do prefer flat eyes generally, like as in flat painted eyes, uh, just because I find that then, whilst it's nice when they do catch the light, uh, you know, as you can kind of see here, actually, when you have it at the wrong angle slightly, they, they tend to look a little bit dull. Um, but still, it's, it's perfectly serviceable, that face. Hands are quite interesting too, as they've got this kind of, um, I don't know, really curved style to them. Uh, quite distinctive. I mean, very like Montana in that respect, so uh, that's definitely a commonality in terms of the design. Okay, well we've put it off long enough, so <laughs> let's talk about that bottom half, shall we? Particularly those, uh, those legs. Uh, as this is where things are a little bit less successful with this mode, I think. Everything sort of from the knee upward looks, looks pretty good. Um, this leg is just quite messy, to be completely honest, quite messy, um, for various reasons. Uh, the fake part for the for the feet is is okay, that looks fine. Um, it's got this kind of weird bit that juts out on the side, which is, uh, I guess it is what it is, but that's that's okay. Uh, and really, you know, it's it's not remarkable really in any way, but, uh, but this bit looks okay. Um, what is weird, and when you spot it, you can't unsee it, is that this whole bit of the leg is the front of the cab. So where you've got the fake part here, uh, and this is kind of meant to be, you know, essentially the cab shrunk down for his for his feet and his toes, uh, actually it's still very much on display that this is the front of the cab here forming the whole of the leg. Uh, and once you see it, it's really hard not to notice it and it looks, it looks bad. I mean, look, I'm really not trying to be unfair here, as I get it, Motormaster is a complicated design. There's always going to be compromises. There have been on the, the other options, the other third party options that we've had so far as well. So, you know, fair enough, there are going to be compromises. But this is just really obvious once you spot it. I mean, particularly with the cab doors on the side here, uh, which of course, you know, still can open. So that's just quite funny. Um, you know, it's still got the, the little headlights here just below the knee. Uh, not headlights, but you know, the kind of the, the roof lights. Um, windscreen wipers, it's all really visually obvious. There's, it's not covered up at all. So yeah, it just kind of sits there. And it does, it does detract, I'm afraid. It does detract from the robot mode. Uh, I, I can't unsee it now. I remember noticing it once uh, on a photo of this guy. Uh, I was hoping that it might be a little bit less obvious in hand, but yeah, you, you just can't unsee it once you've seen it. Uh, and consequently then the foot kind of looks a bit silly because it's just not as nice and it, it, it feels a little bit um, undercooked uh, by comparison. Uh, I mean, it's even got little side windows and stuff. So there is a good attention to detail in some respects, but because it just looks so simplistic versus the, the actual thing, I don't know, it doesn't, it, the whole thing just doesn't kind of work somehow. And then, you know, you turn him round and uh, yeah, there's just more going on. Uh, I mean, look, I can forgive things like the smokestacks on the back here because that's just, I mean, that, they've got to go somewhere, right? Um, this really obvious wheel here is a bit, a bit gratuitous. I don't know, I don't know what the word is. A bit obvious, maybe. It is, it is hidden around the back, so fair enough, I guess, but it's very hard to unsee. Uh, it just kind of sticks out there a little bit and just doesn't feel particularly elegant. Even these little fake wheels just kind of, I don't know, this whole section just doesn't really do it for me somehow. Uh, it's fine, it just kind of juts out a little bit to the side, so uh, never quite looks as natural as maybe it should, uh, I don't know. Um, 
it's just something about it doesn't quite gel for me. I don't know. It's okay. It's okay. And, and you know, everything is where it needs to be. Um, but it doesn't quite get there. I think the, the problem is actually kind of compounded when you need to use the ankle tilt. I mean, we'll look at the articulation in more in just a minute, but yeah, certainly with the ankle tilt going on, uh, you know, these wheels on the side just kind of jut out a little bit more, and it becomes all the more obvious that actually it's, um, uh, it doesn't really kind of hang together. They don't look like they're part of this fake cab at all, so they feel sort of like a separate thing. Uh, and just visually, these two bits, because they don't line up, it ends up looking quite messy. Uh, and actually it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't visually, it doesn't seal the deal enough to, to then hide this uh, actual cab section, uh, which is just all too obvious as the rest of the legs. So yeah, I, I, I don't like it. Personally, I don't like it from the knees down. I just think it's a bit of a mess, sadly. Which is a real shame because you know what, I mean I keep saying it, but from the knees upwards he really does look great and he cleans up superbly well. Uh, I like everything going on here, really really like it. Uh, it's just kind of here that I have, you know, issues with, let's say. Uh, but you know what, on balance, overall, it's really not a bad robot mode at all. Uh, and I do think it does a, a good job at representing the character in many, many ways. Uh, and as I say, it's very clean on the backpack, so that's a real plus. Uh, so maybe it's pros and cons with this guy. And maybe for you, the legs are not such a big deal because actually there, there are benefits to this design as well. Do you know what I mean? If you can, I don't know, get over this bit visually uh, or that doesn't bother you, actually there is a lot to like here overall. There is, honestly. As far as articulation goes, the head can turn from side to side. And it also does a weird thing in that it pops up. Um, I put it back down again as I think it looks a bit more natural for Motormaster's design to be to be down like that and sitting flush against his shoulders. But you can um, pop it up and, and you can leave it like that should you wish. Uh, and that does give you quite a decent bit of um, up and down uh, range of motion as well. Uh, and indeed, it, it does make turning the head a little bit easier too. These shoulder joints are really, wow, really fantastic. Love it. Really, really nice satisfying ratchets uh, and there's a decent bend uh, and decent articulation all around at the uh, at the shoulder joint. You've then got a, a bicep swivel and you've got yeah not much at the at the elbow actually really not actually <laughs> quite a lot at all not 90 degrees uh, so quite shy of that. We looked at the hands already but in terms of articulation uh, you do have a little bit of back and forth uh, just like that at the wrist uh, and obviously wrist swivel and then uh, the hands themselves uh, are articulated uh, with the thumb being separate, uh, the first finger is separate, and then all of the rest of the pieces are on a single, uh, the, the rest of the fingers are on a single molded piece. Decent and quite tight waist swivel going on there, and uh, an ab crunch as well. Single piece hip flap, so ugh, don't really uh, care for that, but hey. And uh, then uh, fairly decent articulation at the hips, they go, yeah, 90 degrees. Now the knees are a surprise because you can actually go all the way back. That's really, really good. And of course, I already alluded to the fact that there's quite a decent ankle tilt with this guy. Um, no back and forth or anything on the feet though. Right, so we'll go ahead and get him posed up properly, but firstly, let's put his weapons in his hands. And the sword just has a little tab for the palm of his hands. And then you can close the fingers around like so. And then the gun is a similar story. There we go, and that fits quite securely. And yeah, he actually poses up quite nicely. He feels quite fluid. Uh, the joints feel good uh, for the most part, um, and and uh, and actually he looks pretty good with his weapons in his hands as well. So uh, I like it. Actually, the more I kind of get my hands on him and play around with him, uh, I, I think he's, uh, he's he's growing on me. Certainly, I, I do kind of like him. Uh, I did find that um, a couple of the the like the wrist joints, for example, are not the not the most solid. Uh, so particularly with the gun, it just feels a bit kind of, I don't know, like a bit wobbly. Um, that actually feels like it's going to fall out. So uh, having said it's secure, I'm not sure how much it is. Uh, but overall, he feels, you know, quite tight and robust and doesn't really feel like he's going anywhere. It's maybe just those wrists. And again, yeah, he looks pretty good. I mean, I think probably my biggest bugbear in terms of the posability is the fact that the arms won't um, won't go uh, particularly the, the elbows won't uh, go more than they do because it really does impede some of the poses that you can get this guy into uh, and particularly when you've got a bot that's wielding a sword you know you want them to have some quite dramatic poses so 
that is a little bit limiting i'm not going to lie uh but uh otherwise it's it's kind of all good i mean I, um, again that uh that ankle tilt looks a little bit awkward uh but it's not bad it's not bad um and then there's the hip skirt oh hip skirts uh, <laughs> single piece hip skirts especially uh but you know what overall he's he seems like a lot of fun i gotta say he does seem like a lot of fun I mean, in some ways, it's a shame that you can't kind of do more with that knee bend because um, uh, just the <laughs> the hips don't really allow you to get kind of a decent kneel out of him. Uh, but still, <laughs> if you get creative enough, I'm sure you can get some decent poses out of him. So, uh, you know, what? an overall, yeah, he's, he's starting to grow on me just a little bit. I definitely have some major grumbles about this robot mode. Um, definitely do. Uh, but still, there's some fun to be had there for sure. Right, well, we're going to do some comparisons of the Motormaster robot, and uh, here we go. So first up, let's take a look at him with some Autobots. Here's MP44, Optimus Prime, or Convoy, whichever you prefer. There's Masterpiece uh, Ironhide. We'll bring in Masterpiece Prowl, and Masterpiece Sunstreaker, just on the end there. And uh, yeah, I guess it's kind of as you, you would expect. Um, I mean, the first thing to note is that he shapes up quite nicely with Optimus. Uh, that looks quite good, actually. Um, and uh, I think he's about a decent height for them, I have to say. Uh, some of the other Motormasters are a bit bigger, as we'll see. Um, but that looks quite good to my eye. So if you are after a Motormaster to take on your Autobots, this could be the one. But of course, maybe he'd be more at home with some Decepticons. So here is Masterpiece Megatron, and we'll just stick in on the end there, Make Toys Meteor, uh, in lieu of the official Masterpiece Starscream. The new version's coming soon, of course. Uh, we have Masterpiece Soundwave, and I think we could just squeeze him in, uh, just about on the end there. Uh, Masterpiece Laser Wave or Shock Wave, whichever you prefer. Most people probably call him Shock Wave. And uh, yeah, there, there you go. That's a bit of a, a Decepticon lineup for you. And uh, I think um, Capone looks pretty good with them, actually. He does, um, I didn't really talk about it earlier, but he does kind of uh, capture the cartoony look quite nicely. I think it's the colors, but also the kind of softer sculpt. Um, you know, there's not too much kind of greebling and detail and whatever else. It's fairly simplistic. Uh, in terms of the overall design. Uh, and so in that regard, he matches stuff like MP36 and even Meteor, Make Toys Meteor, um, and the Shockwave quite nicely. Um, so yeah, I, that for me, you know what, that works. Well, let's go for a bit more of a futuristic lineup now. And here is Galvatron, which is Fans Toys Sovereign. Uh, and then we've also got Fans Toys Quietus, uh, just on the side there. And filling in the ranks, we've got X Transbots, uh, what's his name? X Transbots Andres. <laughs> I had to think there for a minute. Uh, I have mentioned before, but I do remember all of these third party names on the fly. So just occasionally I'm liable to forget one. Uh, X, -transbot and, uh, X Transbots Andres. There's a new version of him on the way too, a kind of um, darker blue version. So looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's how he looks with a, a slightly more uh, futuristic uh, lineup. Uh, of course, Motormaster can fit into both. And he's, a, he's a, maybe just a, a smidge taller than Sovereign and the likes, uh, the likes of him, but uh, actually lines up almost eye level, I think, with, uh, with uh, Quietus. Maybe just a, a, a smidge taller again, but uh, he looks good. Well, now let's look at him versus some other combiners. Um, so here he is with Oculomax uh, Assaultus, who is massive, <laughs> absolutely massive. So no surprise there, but uh, Capone is looking a bit smaller. Uh, then we've got some of the rest of the Oculomax crew. We've got Oculomax uh, Impetus uh, just there, which is their Vortex. Uh, we'll throw in just on the end there uh, Oculomax Fraudo, their Swindle. And uh, a bit of a sneak preview this one, um, but uh, haven't finished the unboxing video for him just yet. But here is Oculomax, uh, what's his name? Velatus, Velatus, uh, their Blastoff. Um, the, his unboxing video is on the way too. Uh, just uh, started on that yesterday. Um, so there you go. That's how he looks with the Ocular Max crew. I've got a review of all of these guys, uh, apart from Velatus, which will be up soon. The, the other three, uh, all reviews on my channel, so you can check those out. Um, but to my eye, that looks quite nice, actually. I quite like it. I mean, it uh, depends how you feel about um, old Onslaught being so much bigger. Uh, 
um, but that's you know that's really down to that guy being so big um, but otherwise you know design wise everything else yeah it, it looks good to my eye I like that and then of course it might be interesting to see him versus some stunticons so here he is with X-Transbots Overheat their drag strip and X-Transbots uh, Deathwish their um, dead end and then we have we'll bring in the fans toys crew so far uh, this is fans toys magnum their wild rider and fans toys spoiler which is their breakdown so uh yeah i thought it'd be interesting because then there you have the entire stunticon lineup all five characters uh, but represented from different third parties so you have fans toys dx9 and x transbots um so <laughs> i mean I'm, look, I'm sure no one is going to go for that as a display right because I mean, even height-wise between the different companies, there's a lot of variation. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, DX9's um, car guys are uh, roughly about the same height as, as these two. So, uh, and we'll look at Montana in just a second. Um, but yeah, I thought it'd be interesting to see all the same. Um, I'd, I'd love to know if someone actually is planning on collecting a lineup like this. Please do tell me if you are, because I'm fascinated. And lo and behold, I mentioned Montana and here he is. Uh, with his uh, with his boss and uh, yeah I mean you know what they look good together I will say I have a lot of quibbles about Montana uh, which if you haven't watched my review check it out um, but yeah a lot a lot of quibbles about that toy particularly around the fit and finish uh, the design itself is imperfect needless to say it's got a lot of problems but uh, really it was the fit and finish that killed it for me um, but actually to be fair uh, Capone is much more sturdy so far so that's a, that's good but, you know, I know what you came here to see, don't worry. So we're going to do a straight up three-way Motormaster comparison. So here we go. Uh, <laughs> there are your Motormasters. Uh, this is my life now, I can't even believe it. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Okay, so this is Fans Toys Road King. Uh, and then this is X-Transbot's Gravestone, just on the end here. And then of course you've got Capone in the middle. Uh, in case you've not been watching. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's all three of your third party uh, Motormaster options. And I think what's really interesting is that they all have their differences, of course, but actually they're not that far apart. I mean, forever, this is one of those um, character options when whenever I post a picture of one of them, someone will inevitably confuse it with one of the other options. So if I post a picture of X Transbots, someone will say, oh, is, that's, that's the fans toys and, and, or DX9 or whatever it may be. Um, it happened just yesterday. And, uh, and I can see why, because actually at a cursory glance, uh, you know, even from even my own photos, sometimes I have to look at them and be like, which one's that again? Because they're not that stunningly different, right? They all hit the same beats ultimately, you know, cab feet, <laughs> bulky body, uh, the little kind of circular nipple things, although fans toys go uh, are outies and the other two's are, are innies. Don't ask me why, it just is what it is. And then this kind of ridiculous, um, uh, you know, hooded, hooded head. Uh, and then the arms are all kind of similar as well. Where they do vary a bit is in colors. Um, I mean, the purple, the shades of purple are a little bit different across the three. Uh, I mean, Fan Story is definitely the most vibrant. Uh, I really like what they've done with the uh, with the purple there, the translucent uh, plastic purple. That looks really, really nice, uh, and that carries through to the chest quite well as well. Um, whereas actually, DX9, yeah, it's nice. It, lo it looks a bit dull by comparison. Actually, it's it's sort of um, like a washed out purple almost. Whereas actually, yeah, that that looks way more vibrant and striking. Uh, and I do like what X Transports have done with theirs, but they've you know got painted sections here. Uh, their plastic, uh, they've got translucent plastic as well. It's obviously the thing for Motormaster to have translucent plastic, uh, but definitely Fans Toys, that's the most striking uh, in that regard anyway. Uh, then you've got some color variation on the arms. Um, X Transport's more of a, not a bone white, but certainly more of a, more of a brilliant white, getting closer to it. Uh, and then variations of gray on these two. Um, Fans Toys a bit warmer. Um, even in the, 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 it's not black on any of them, it's approaching it on fans toys but even then there's a bit of variation x transports have got this kind of warmish uh not quite sort of blue or purple hue to it um it, it's it's kind of getting there it's, it's warmer than the uh or certainly more colorful than the other two um whereas fans toys is m much more of a straight up very 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 dark gray almost approaching black and dx9 have got this kind of muted gray 
uh, it's still dark, but it's, it's, it's certainly, it's brighter, it's a bit warmer, uh, and it looks different by comparison. I think in terms of proportions, uh, I think actually, I think the X9 is the best, I gotta I got be honest. I think uh, they've, they've really kind of hit it uh, in terms of how it, it looks. Uh, I guess it depends what you're really after. I mean, Road King, uh, for, for better or for worse, is a real beefy lad, real stocky. He's got, you know, big legs and thick arms and just thick body and he's big and, but you know, I mean, I, to be fair to him, he's packing all the trailer in there and everything as well. So I think when you discuss this and you do consider Road King, you'd have to kind of consider what's going on uh, in terms of that transformation as well, because that's, you know, that's important. Um, by comparison, X-Transbots, uh, the legs are quite lean, the upper body is sort of quite tapered as well, on account of the fact that this is the front of the cab section. So, yeah, actually I think, I've got to be honest, I think DX9 is the best in terms of proportions, uh, which I'm surprised to say, but uh, it is what it is. I mean, ultimately, they've all got good and bad things going for them, right? I mean, every toy has uh, good and bad bits, I suppose, but uh, there are things that I like about all of them. Uh, fans toys, I mean, I think that, again, that transformation is just so impressive. The finish is spectacular, uh, and I do like the design. I like the head sculpt, I, I like the look of him. He looks really imposing, uh, so that's great. X Transbots, uh, I really like the look of the, the bot again. Uh, proportions are a little bit uh, strange here and there, but uh, you know, generally speaking, I think he hits the animation model quite hard. Um, I like what they've done uh, with the feet. I think the, the legs and the feet are really the, the major, major plus on this design um, because they're the cleanest by far. Uh, the solution for the feet is the best by far on all three of these guys. So the legs, for me, X Transbots, nails it way better than uh, dx9 and and certainly better than fans toys as well um but then there's a few compromises in the the top of the body because uh, it's obvious that it's like the the front of the truck um dx9 you know what actually from the knees up it's great it's really really good like it a lot it's just really from those knees down again that there's just so many compromises so uh, i ultimately i think you know what they've all got good and bad really whichever you go for you know, they're all good options. In their own way, they're all good options. That's my conclusion from this. We're in a blessed age, people. At the end of the day, we're so lucky to have three companies willing to bring us a homage to a character from, what is it, 35 years ago now, almost, uh, that all look as good as this. And I could grumble about bits of them, but realistically, we're in a golden age, you know, what else can I say? How lucky are we? Look at it. It's just ridiculous, really, that this is going on. Uh, I'm going to start waffling now, so I'll cut it there, but we're just very lucky. Right, well, now it's the moment that you've all been waiting for, because we've uh, taken a look at Motormaster here, uh, and you may notice that there's a bit of extra space. <laughs> in fact, I uh, built an entirely new setup just specifically for this bit, uh, because it's time to take a look at the trailer section. <laughs> and of course, we're not going to leave it like that. Although I did note whilst I was uh, checking it out that actually there's very conveniently a little uh, neutral face going on here. A couple of eyes, little mouth. Uh, it is a happy camper, isn't he? <laughs> so you could just leave it like that if indeed you uh, you really want to. Uh, but of course, we're going to go ahead now and get the trailer transformed up into that combine mode and then we'll be doing some comparisons with some other uh, sizable bots uh, to see how it looks. Let's go!
right, well, there we go. And uh, well, that was an experience, wasn't it? Uh, don't really know where to start, to be honest. Uh, well, here he is in combined mode, uh, or at least the shell of it, anyway, the, the bulk of it. Uh, obviously no cars attached yet, uh, and actually uh, Motomaster himself, Capone, uh, I haven't plugged uh, into the back. Um, but this is literally just the trailer section. So what you're seeing here uh, is the kind of, uh, yeah, the shell of the combined form, quite literally. You don't actually need any of the five team members, including Capone, uh, himself, you know, the, the actual robot part, to, to form this. This is purely made out of that back half of the, uh, or back section of the trailer. And uh, the transformation, let's talk about that quickly first, that was uh, quite the experience, quite the experience. Um, the most obvious thing to mention is that some of the joints are ridiculously tight. I mean, crazy, crazy tight. Uh, I, I, I sort of probably glossed over it a bit in the, in the video uh, sequence just because, uh, you know, I was, I was struggling so much <laughs> off camera. I was kind of uttering so many swear words at one point. And it's all to do with these, uh, these hips because uh, there's, a, there's a kind of a, a hinge mechanism that, that gets them to splay out to the sides. And then in theory, just at the hip joint itself, it should ratchet down to, to you know, to be straight um, against the body. In practice, these hip ratchets are, I mean, categorically, they're the strongest ratchets I've ever seen on a Transformers toy, official or non. Categorically the strongest. It, crazy, crazy tight. Uh, but the other annoying thing is because of the, this mechanism in here, um, I'm, I'm aware how this looks, because of this mechanism in here to splay out the, um, the, the hips uh, themselves, to splay out that whole section, you know, that's on a, a, a kind of um, some gears that gets it to, to go like that and fan out. But the gears are not strong enough to hold it in place when you want to ratchet the hip down. So actually, as you push the hips down, the, the gears collapse. So it's frustrating beyond belief. I can't even tell you. Uh, I did have this piece, uh, this purple piece, translucent piece on the on the chest there, just pop out. Uh, it fell out. It's not meant to. Um, so I might need to, to put a, a dab of glue on that at some point. Uh, I've just plonked it back in for now and it seems to be holding uh, so we'll just keep an eye on that but um, but yeah there we go and uh, you know what the result is quite something I really I really dig it I really really dig it this is if I'm honest this is the bit that really tempted me to go in on the DX9 set was I was just so curious to see this thing in hand and it doesn't disappoint it's um firstly it's massive absolutely massive uh, really really tall we'll do some comparisons in a minute and you can see just how tall it is uh it's a it's a big thing to witness i like the proportions i think that the the uh, robot mode looks great some people are gonna hate this solution i mean people uh, when i posted pictures of zeta bruticus which you know the the thighs and the torso is all like a one fake piece people had thoughts about that you know some people some people like it because it's because of the result uh, some people hated it uh, so I would imagine that people will have strong feelings about <laughs> the solution that's been employed here. Um, but I dig it. Honestly, I think if the result is worth it, I I'm all for it, personally. And on the back, there you go. You see you've got these um, hollow sections, and obviously these bits are where the uh, cars, the various Stunticon cars, will go, as well as the arms. And then, quite clearly, Capone will... Um, you know, kind of transform up into <laughs> a block, basically, and plug into the back. So there's an element to say that other than filling in this hugely hollow middle section that Capone is a bit redundant in the combined, in the combined form, but um, obviously you're still going to want to put him in place just there, obviously. Uh, so yeah, really, really interesting design. Really interesting design. Just looking at some of the closer details, and I really like this translucent purple section that they've got on the chest just there. Hoping it doesn't pop out again, um, but it looks really, really great and adds a bit of visual interest to the otherwise black and grey combined mode, so that's a good job. Similar story on this crotch piece, which honestly looks uh, looks really good, looks phenomenal. Uh, and again, it's that translucent plastic, but even the moulding here is really nicely done. Like the thighs quite a bit too, like this sort of um, double rectangle thing they've got going on here. That's very reminiscent of the cartoon. Uh, and, and I like that they haven't put too much detail on there. That's quite nice, I have to say. Uh, interestingly, in the instructions, it shows this piece moving forward or kind of coming out a little bit to expose more sort of robotic detail just in the, in the seams at the side here. I cannot, for the life of me, 
make that happen. I don't know if I'm missing something. It, I, I almost tried prying it and, uh, you know, with a little tool and it does look like it should go, but I just cannot get it to happen. So that's one to figure out another day, I guess, but it looks fine either way. The hands are worth a mention. I really, really like them. Um, they're not overdone at all. They don't look ugly, which, you know, a lot of particularly combiner mode hands sometimes can. Uh, they're nicely expressive and kind of got this uh, kind of curved quality to them, which is great. But um, still, they're you know, nicely articulated too, so I think that's going to be really, really good. We'll cover off articulation and posing another day when we've got the full combine mode uh, up and running. But uh, you know, it does feel like the joints are generally pretty solid uh, and pretty good. Uh, there's lots of ratchets and things like that going on, so it feels pretty sturdy actually. Gonna say that this hip skirt looks a bit weird. I mean, particularly these bits on the side, which of course are, you know, the sides of the trailer just kind of, I don't know, sort of fanned out or whatever. It's it's bizarre. It does look a bit bizarre. I'm not gonna lie. Um, all right from a sort of front on view, but anything from the sides, this becomes a little bit obvious. Uh, and then the other kind of big uh, no-no for me is that this is a single piece uh, hip skirt, uh, which needs to fold up in order to have the legs. Um, you know, fold up, and they do fold up quite nicely, but uh, yeah, single piece hip skirt on a bot this size. Oh yeah, and this bit pops out too. That's annoying. <laughs> this pops out quite a bit and did several times during transformation. I mean, we've got to talk about that face sculpt, right? Uh, I love it. I really, really love it, honestly. Um, whereas I was a bit so-so about Capone's face, actually, I think they've done a great job with Motormaster here. Uh, I think it's uh, really, really quite something. Uh, a bit, um, a bit gormless maybe, but I don't know. I don't mind that. I, I think it really suits the character. Uh, I believe the eyes light up as well, but I haven't even had a chance to explore that yet. Well, again, we'll, we'll do the combined mode in more detail another day when it's all assembled. But uh, for now, that face looks really spectacular. Uh, and you can just move his, uh, his horns a wee bit as well. So uh, I think they look better splayed out to the side. I think they look a bit silly like that. But um, yeah, love that face. Well, anyway, he's looking pretty uh, pretty good, but let's go ahead and get some weapons in his hands, shall we? Right, well, I've just made myself sad by remembering that I don't have the lightning bug accessory that becomes his gun. Uh, having looked into it just quickly off camera, apparently it's uh, maybe an early run thing. So it's like if you got one of the um, the early run toys, early run copies, then uh, you get that, that accessory, but I don't, clearly. So uh, hey-ho, not the end of the world. Let's go ahead and plug in his sword. So that just tabs in uh, to the palm of his hand like so, and then you wrap the fingers sort of round like that. Let's make no mistake, that's going to look truly, truly spectacular when it's done, right? That sword is immense and he looks really, really cool holding it. Love it. Okay, well, we're going to do a few comparisons now. And to be honest, this is the bit that I've been looking forward to most of all. Can't wait to see how he looks versus uh, a few of the bots. So let's get cracking. Right, well, first of all, we've got uh, the DX9 guys themselves. So we've got Capone uh, and uh, Montana, of course, who I just reviewed recently. And... Uh... <laughs> It's kind of funny, right? I mean, you've got to laugh uh, because obviously, as we well know by now, the uh, entire combined mode is made without any of the stunt cons actually being integrated whatsoever. Uh, and indeed, poor old Motormaster could just sit on the sidelines. But um, it's still funny to see. I mean, look, ultimately, I'm looking forward to completing this set uh, more than ever now, actually. I, I really am looking forward to seeing it all combined up properly. Uh, but for now, we can have a, a little laugh about it all the same. And here he is with the Oculomax Combaticons, and that's really interesting to see. I mean, as we know, in Cursus, their onslaught is uh, is very, very big anyway, so, um, but still, you know, looks quite small in comparison to Attila, let's be fair. Uh, and actually, the combined mode for these guys, we don't have the full team just yet, but the combined mode for these guys won't be as big as Attila either. So that's um, that'll be interesting to see. We'll do a comparison of that, I'm sure, at some point in the future, but uh, I do know that it won't be as tall as uh, as Attila here, so uh, we'll have to see how that shapes up another day. And here he is with a bit of a traditional Decepticon lineup. So we've got uh, Masterpiece MP36, Masterpiece Soundwave, a couple of the Make Toys Seekers, and the Bad Cube Insecticons. 
uh, which are my personal uh, preference for that set. But um, yeah, really interesting to see. And uh, you know what? This is really, for me, what it's all about when it comes to uh, masterpiece collecting. And to be honest, I'm sure it will be the same for a lot of Transformers collectors, no matter you know what line they, they choose to go after. Uh, Transformers collectors love scale, typically speaking, or most of us do anyway. Uh, and when you see this kind of ridiculous uh, scale differential, you know, between the, the truly, truly big bots uh, and the sort of more regular size crew, for me, that makes it really, really exciting. I think this is um, the kind of figure and the kind of scale that just makes, for me personally, masterpiece collecting just truly uh, an awe at times. It's one of those moments where you just step back and go, wow, like, <laughs> I can't believe that it's actually a thing that someone has made. Incredible. Well, we did the Decepticons, so here are the Autobots. So we've got MP44, Optimus Prime, a couple of the Carbots, uh, Bumblebee, Ironhide, and uh, yeah, similar story, really. I mean, it's just, <laughs> just crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. Uh, I'm sort of lost for words, really. I mean, I, I kind of knew what it was going to look like, but it, it is one of those moments, truly, that, um, uh, you know, you can see in pictures or whatever else, but seeing it firsthand, it's really something. It looks fantastic. I've got to be honest, it's uh, very, very exciting. Very exciting indeed. Right, so we're going to look at um, a sort of parade of uh, ever-increasingly big bots now. And uh, hey, do you remember when the, when you thought that the Fans Toys Dinobots were, were quite large toys? Uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like that long ago, does it? And <laughs> look at them now. Of course, the same is true of Fans Toys Phoenix, their Skyfire. And uh, I mean, ugh, beautiful toy, absolutely beautiful. And I remember, when, I remember when I first got this thing in hand and just being to be honest, blown away by the, the sheer size of it, you know, just how massive it is. Uh, and it still is. I mean, it's a big toy, but just uh, doesn't look it right now. Same goes for fans' hobby Overlord, their uh, double evil figure, which is an absolute brute of a thing. I mean, really, really uh, very sizable, chunky bot, uh, but suddenly looks uh, almost quite small by comparison. And then we're getting into Combiner territory, of course, and this is Power of the Prime's Predaking. Uh, and it is the official toy, although it's had um, a couple of upgrades to it. So I've got the, uh, the DNA, DNA Design Upgrade Kit on there, in case you're wondering about the hands and, and other bits. So uh, yeah, and it's really interesting to see. This, uh, this guy is roughly about 18 inches tall, uh, so it gives you a, a good idea of, of how much bigger that extra couple of inches uh, you know, how, how much of a difference that makes, ultimately. Uh, so interesting to see. And of course, he's the same height as Unite Warriors or, um, or other Combiner Wars uh, Devastator as well, in case you're wondering. So that's how that would shape up. Speaking of Devastator, though, here's Toy World Constructor. Um, and uh, yeah, big old thing, isn't he? Big old thing. Uh, but really, really interesting to see, because actually uh, Attila more than matches him for height, and actually I think at eye level, yeah, definitely takes it. Uh, he's just a, a smidge taller even, so uh, so there you go. That's, um, <laughs> that's quite an accolade, uh, and really interesting to see. I mean, stylistically, uh, these two actually look a little bit different. Uh, Constructor is um, he very heavy on the detail, got, you know, kind of a lot of greebles and things like that going on, uh, whereas Attila definitely looks a bit smoother overall, and uh, yeah, in that regard, probably hits the animation model look uh, a little bit better as well. Um, but certainly, you know, anybody looking to amass, uh, you know, a lineup of Decepticon combiners, it, it's going pretty well at this stage. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There are numerous options, and it's it's looking pretty good. Speaking of, um, of Constructor, I actually have him in uh, Generation Two colors as well. And uh, gosh, I love the idea of. of DX9 or someone doing a, a, a Generation 2 set of their Stunticons as well. I hope it happens. Anyway, for now, we'll take a look at this, which is surely the money shot, isn't it? This is the one that uh, I'm sure a lot of people will have, been, will have been wanting to see. I know that this is what I was really curious about um, and, and was super keen to view in hand. And I'm not disappointed. I'm not disappointed. So, of course, this is Zeta Superion. Uh, their take on Superion, which is uh, a real thing in combined mode. It's absolutely massive. Uh, and, and as you can 
no doubt see lines up really nicely with DX9 Attila. Uh, actually Attila if anything again is, is probably just a smidge taller but I, I don't mind that you know it, it works for me uh, certainly well enough and stylistically they look really really strong together as well I think. Uh, so yeah I like Zeta Superior a lot it's um, not a perfect toy by any means and it'll be interesting to see what fans toys do with their um, aerial bots as that's happening and how big that's going to be as well we don't really know that yet so there's a, a lot of unknown on that score uh, but for now Zeta Superion does the does the job for me definitely I like it a lot in combined mode less in uh, the individual forms but but this to me looks wonderful the two of them together that is wonderful this is why I came to the party with these DX9 Stunticons just because I was so curious to see this and as I say I'm not disappointed and there's one final comparison for the day. Here he is with Titan class Earthrise Scorponok, which of course is uh, kind of the hot toy of the moment or has been. Uh, I don't know, is it still the hot toy? Have we moved on already? I, I don't know, I don't really keep up. But uh, anyway, it's a toy that a lot of people have just recently got in hand. Uh, absolute monster that it is. Uh, really, really nice figure too. And uh, yeah, gosh, Attila in his combined form is not far off certainly eh? that's that's pretty close so that will give um, a good indication for a lot of people I have to be fair got Scorponok in quite the wide-legged stance so he would indeed be taller uh, overall um, by you know a, a little margin at least um, so he is in quite a wide-legged legged stance there to kind of fit him in if nothing else um, but uh, yeah really really interesting to see all the same and uh, wow what a set of comparisons that has been and you know what we still didn't figure out what this little grey piece was for it's a mystery. So final thoughts on Capone and obviously the, the shell of, uh, of Attila as well. Well, where to begin really? I mean, it's such a, it's an epic package overall. I mean, I do think that uh, it, it's good value for money. I have to say there's a lot of fun contained within this one package. Uh, you know, so that that's worth considering. Um, I think that uh, the actual robot of Capone himself uh, is overall really really nice. Uh, you know I've said it many times but from the knees upwards he's pretty much everything I would want in a, in a kind of you know masterpiece style motor master. Really really good. The knees downwards is quite the mess. To be honest it's quite the mess. If you can look past that and or it doesn't really bother you to begin with then you know he could be a really really good option for you. Uh, if this bothers you in, in pictures, what you see going on with the legs there, it's going to bother you in hand. Uh, the combined mode uh, is spectacular. It's fair to say this is really really going to be something when it's all done. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, I have a hard time with it because obviously Montana, I, I said in my video on him that he had major problems and that, you know, I, I, it's, not, it's not a recommendation from me to be honest on Montana. But seeing this and knowing what's to come and you know if all you're going to do is jam Montana in car mode and stick him on the back of one of the legs or whatever then uh, maybe it's worth it do you know what I mean well we'll, we'll have to see I'm going to hold off giving a, a sort of strong recommendation on this set until it's complete obviously but uh, but needless to say for now the combined mode is really spectacular apart from these hips which is just bad uh, no reason for them to be that tight whatsoever it's just not necessary um, but still otherwise it's it's good um, and then and then obviously you have the vehicle mode which I mean look it's ridiculous let's be honest it really still makes me laugh when I think about it just how ridiculous that vehicle mode is but again does that bother you is that an issue for you that's what you've got to ask yourself so do you know what I think on balance overall I'm gonna have to say it's a toot. So that's DX9 Capone. Now I will be checking out the rest of this set as well and you can find my Montana video elsewhere on my channel. I'll put a link to TF Source's listing for this guy in the video description and I'll be aiming to get the full review up on their site ASAP. Now I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did then please drop me a like and maybe consider subscribing to the channel too. Thanks also to everyone who already supports me on Patreon. Details are coming up at the end of the video. Otherwise that's it from me. So enjoy the rest of your day, TTFN. Yeah.